These notes explain the concept of density. In order to understand density, first we have to understand the difference between mass and volume. In order to understand mass, we need to know what matter is. So matter is defined as anything that has mass and takes up space. It's like the stuff that something is made out of. So gold is a form of matter. Dipepsi is a form of matter. Helium gas is a form of matter. Not all matter is stuff you can see. For example, air is invisible, but it is matter, and it does in fact have mass. Mass is defined as the amount of matter in an object. You can think of it as though you were counting up all of the atoms and molecules and thinking about how big those atoms and molecules were, and that would give you an indication of the total amount of matter you have there. Mass is independent of gravity. So in order to measure mass, we need to have a balance scale. And we measure it in units of kilograms, grams, milligrams. It's a measure of how much matter there is in something. Weight, on the other hand, is a measure of how hard gravity is pulling down on that something. Your weight depends on two things. It depends on your mass, how much of you there is, and the force of gravity, how strong gravity is pulling. Your weight is different in different places because the pull of gravity isn't the same everywhere. For example, an astronaut weighs more on Earth than he does on the moon, but it's not like there's any less of the astronaut when he goes to the moon. He doesn't get smaller, he doesn't lose any atoms, he doesn't get super skinny, he just weighs less because gravity is pulling him down with less force. His mass, however, stays the same. There's still the same total amount of astronaut no matter where he is. Volume then describes the amount of space that matter takes up. So we did some examples where we were finding the volume of a liquid using a graduated cylinder and we, the units we used were liters or milliliters. And that was finding out how much space some liquid takes up. If we want to find the volume of something that has a nice regular shape, we can use some formulas from geometry. So for example, a rectangular prism, the volume of that, how much space it takes up, is length times width times height. For a cylinder, the formula is the area of the base, that's pi r squared, times its height. And in all of these cases, the volume that we get comes in units of centimeters cubed. A cubic centimeter is, imagine a little cube that's one centimeter long, one centimeter wide, and one centimeter high. That's a cubic centimeter. When we describe the volume of something in cubic centimeters, we're describing how many of those little cubes could fit inside of it. If we want to find the volume of something that's strangely shaped, we can use the displacement method. And you did this in a lab earlier this year, where you saw how much water was pushed out of the way when you dropped a marble into a graduated cylinder. That tells you how much space the, the marble takes up because you need to move the water out of the way. Density, then, is a measure of the mass per unit volume. That means how much mass, how much matter, is crammed into the space of that object. Another way of thinking of it is how tightly packed in is that stuff. We have a math formula for density and it is mass divided by volume gives us density. The units of mass are grams. The units of volume are either milliliters for liquids or cubic centimeters for solids. So when we take mass divided by volume the units grams divided by milliliters gives us the density of a liquid, grams per milliliter. Or for a solid, mass in grams divided by volume in cubic centimeters gives us units of grams per cubic centimeter. Density is what we call a characteristic property. That means that we can use density to figure out what something is. So if you have a lump of metal, and it looks kind of shiny and kind of goldish, but you're not really sure if it's actually gold. Well, the material gold has a particular density. Whether it's a great big chunk of gold or a little tiny chunk of gold, its density will be the same. So if you want to find out if the chunk of metal you have is actually gold, find its mass, find its volume, calculate its density, 
and then see if your chunk of material has the same density as actual gold. Now let's look at how we actually do some problems that involve mass, volume, and density. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start out with the formula for density. There's two ways I'm going to show you to do this. The first, density equals, and I want you to think about, feel the love that you have for this topic in science. It's such a wonderful topic. Density is the same thing as love. And you're thinking, what? Density is so completely not anything like love. It's not like a heart. But really, this will help you remember the formula. Density is mass divided by volume. This is an M on the top for mass, and this is a V on the bottom for volume. So you have the formula density equals mass divided by volume. So that's one little memory trick that can help you remember the formula for calculating density. The other one that can help, and I find it's a little bit more useful and flexible, is to use one of these little triangles. So in this triangle, we're going to put M on the top and D, V on the bottom. If you're trying to remember which of these letters goes where, just remember your science teacher is Mrs. Dever. The way that this triangle works is if I want to know the formula for density, for example, density equals, and I want to find that formula, I'm going to cover up the thing that I'm looking for the formula for, in this case density. What's left behind here is like a fraction with mass on the top and volume on the bottom. It's mass over volume. If I want to know the formula for volume, I can cover over volume here. What's left behind is a formula that's mass on the top and density on the bottom. Mass divided by density. And if I want to know the formula for mass, I cover over mass. And what's left behind is a formula that's D and V next to each other. You know that in math, when you have two variables next to each other, you're multiplying them together. So this triangle can help you generate formulas to solve all different kinds of mass, volume, and density problems. Now let's take a look at how to use this triangle in order to solve some practice problems involving density. This problem goes with page 8 in the regular workflow. So if you're in the regular workflow and you want to flip over there, that's great. If you're in the advanced workflow, you may just want to pay attention to this solving process. So whenever we have problems in volume, involving mass, volume, and density, the first thing I would do is I would set up some workspace. Mass equals blank, volume equals blank, density equals blank. And I'm going to write my triangle over here. My Mrs. Dever triangle. Now I'm ready to start reading through the problem and filling in these blanks. It says a block of aluminum occupies a volume of 15 milliliters. So right there I have one bit of information I can fill in. Volume is 15 milliliters. And weighs, technically we should say has a mass of, 40.5 grams. 40.5 grams. What is its density? Density is the thing I'm trying to find. Now I have the information I need to use my triangle to set up the right formula. Density is the thing I'm trying to find, so I'll cover over density, and what's left behind is the formula for density, mass over volume. I would suggest you write this formula out first. Now, I'm going to rewrite this formula with numbers in place of the variables for mass and volume. So mass was 40.5 grams, volume was 15 milliliters. So now I've set up the math that I need to do there. The very last thing that you'll need to do is grab your calculator and you'll do 40.5 over 15. That's a division problem. 40.5 divided by 15. And the units of your answer will be grams per milliliter. You have grams on the top and milliliters on the bottom. That's grams per milliliter. So as you're going through each problem, I recommend set up some space to record the information first. Set the mass, volume, density, and write in your triangle. Do that as your first step. The second step, then, is to identify what formula you're going to need to use. 
Is it density that you're trying to calculate? If so, your formula is density equals mass over volume. If you were trying to find mass, your formula would be density times volume. If you were trying to find volume, your formula would be mass divided by density. And then you can plug in the numbers from the problem that tell you things like the volume and the mass of whatever it is that you're working with. You can plug those in to the formula that you set up using your triangle and solve for the thing that you don't know.